Okay, everyone, let's do it. It is a fresh year, and I hope you are a fresh you. And I know you will be dropping weight and making more money and like a lot of good things. A lot of good things are gonna happen to you guys this year, okay? I'm rooting for it. And we're gonna kick off the year by, by this. Don't listen to any of the idiots that are talking about real estate, okay? which is probably a horrible way to start out the year, but I'm gonna give some disclaimers to what I mean before we get into it. Um, if you find you get any value out of this, maybe subscribe to the channel. You can drop us a comment, especially if you ever have any questions about real estate that I could answer on the show. And uh, if you need real estate help, you can go to 1911syndicate.com. You can contact us through the site and go there, learn about what we do and what kind of you know, clients we work with and all that kind of stuff. Hint, we, we will work with anyone. We just happen to be more based in the worlds of like military and sort of uh, related cultures there. So anyway, so I think it's very common that we fall into a pattern of listening to the talking heads, right? You turn on the, you know, the Fox News and the CNBCs and the MSNBCs and all this kind of stuff, right? And you listen to what these so-called experts have to say about any given topic, right? And for purposes of our conversation, that would be real estate. So let's review. I just took sort of a sampling of, well, what are the talking heads and the websites and the forecasters? What are they saying about the outlook of the real estate market in 2023? So let me just hit you with some stats. Now, these are proje projections, right? Like no one knows, no, no one can predict the future. But Realtor.com says home prices are going to rise 5.4%. CoreLogic says there's going to be a 4.1% rise. Mortgage Bankers Association, 0.7% rise. Zillow, 0.8% rise. Freddie Mac, decline, 0.2%. Fannie Mae, decline, 1.5%. Redfin, decline, 4%. Amherst, is a real estate or a real estate investment firm decline of five percent between now and September of 2025. Yeah. Wells Fargo decline of 5.5 percent in 2023. Goldman Sachs decline of 7.6 percent, and ING says it's going to decline five to 20 percent. So. What did we learn here? Because these are all organizations, companies that are big names, right? That you would you, you would you know say, well, yeah, they they know they, they got the people on staff, so they would know. Okay, cool. So the spread here is it's going to rise anywhere from it's going to rise up to five point four percent and decline up to twenty percent, and one firm says it's going to decline 5% between now and September of 2025. So what, what can we learn here? That no one has a clue. No one knows what the hell they're talking about. Now, they can look at data right now to say, well, right now, less permits are being issued to build, for example, right? And just go, okay, well, that's a sign, right? The, you know, and then we draw our conclusions from that. But at the end of the day, no one has a freaking clue, everyone. Alleged to the fact that these are the smartest minds in the room, and they're saying it's going to decline up to 20% and rise up to 5%. That's a 25% spread. That's a 25% swing in the housing market from all the smartest minds in the room. So none of them have any clue what they're talking about. How do I know that? Look at the last few election cycles. Not to make this about politics, because that's not what this show is about, but if you look at the last few election cycles, there have been like just things that we knew, that we were told heading into elections about red waves and, oh, there's this thing and we know this thing's going to happen. And they're almost always wrong. So they don't know either. The message is this, everyone. None of these idiots know what they're talking about. They know about as much as I do. Just a random Joe Blow that sells some houses here and there. These guys who pay people hundreds of thousands of dollars to make these projections, they know about what I know, which is if they're being honest, we don't know. We look at a couple data points and we take a guess. And the reality of guessing is this. If you guess long enough, you're going to be right. Right, because someone in this list, right? If you look next year, between the 4.1% rise and the declines of 1.5%, someone in here is going to be right, and they're going to go, "Yeah, we're geniuses. We told you so." 
But all these other idiots are completely wrong. And then someone gets to be the smart one in the room. So are they the smart one in the room or did they get lucky? They got lucky, everyone, okay? So don't believe any of this stuff. Do what is best for you in any given moment. If you look at your finances right now and life circumstances and you say, hey, this is a, I, I think this is about as good a time for me to buy a house as any, you should buy a house. If you think that you're the genius and you're going to predict it, hint, hint, you're not. Uh, but if you think you are, then okay, cool, wait, right? But history tells us, like if you buy a house, you stay in it for a handful of years, as long as you didn't grossly overpay for that house, you're probably going to be fine. You're probably going to have some equity in the house versus if you're renting for the next five years, you got jack shit at the end of it. So don't listen to the talking heads, guys. Do what is best for you. Real-time data. You look at your bank account. You look at your family. You figure out what's best for you guys. Don't listen to the idiots, okay? That's what they are. They're idiots. So we'll go ahead and wrap it up on that very positive, uplifting note, okay? Um, again, if you need real estate help, let us know. We'd love to help you and your family and your toddlers and, um, you know, all that kind of stuff. And your dogs, you know, find a home that is well-suited for them. So, again, 1911syndicate.com. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you guys next time. 